They're going to take the old man on. You know, I just said, I know it'll be embarrassing. The old man whips all three of you one at a time. It's your option. Let's go someplace neutral where you don't ambush your guest and put all that rainbow shit in the background. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you think that's an agenda that they're pushing? Yeah, yeah it's an agenda. I saw it when I was at UCLA 50 plus years ago. Um, they started saying that they were going to destroy manhood. See, first you had the lesbians who hated men. You had the feminists who hated that they weren't men. You had the soy boy, beta boys, you'd call them now, who were white boys who couldn't make it in a white man's world. And you had nothing at that point until you started getting the anti-war thing developing in the late mid-60s. And they came up with this stupid idea that war is a man thing, so the way to stop war is to change the way boys are raised to men. And if you raise them like girls, so they wanted dolls and frilly stuff and were soft and emotional, that would keep boys from becoming warlike when they got to be men. So when you put that ballast into the mix, uh, they started taking over. Now, a little slight history. I'm going to make it as quick as I can. No, take your time. The late 60s, color TV was bankrupting the major movie studios. Paramount, uh, Warner Brothers, uh, MGM, and such like. And they started firing executives to bring people in to get new ideas. See, at that time... If you were an adult, it cost you 50 cents to go to your local movie theater. And every Thursday and Sunday, they had two new movies, man, three cartoons, and some features. So you could walk in anytime you wanted to For 50 and, cents. and wow. see what you would be seeing and then see the whole thing and then sit through what you missed or keep mm -hmm. sitting there. Yeah. And no matter how big a hit the movie was, every Thursday and Sunday, they changed and had two more. So the studios are making like 120, 250 movies a year, and they all had the same cast of stars that were in every movie. Mm -hmm. Well, what they came up with was two things. They had these young, bright folks that were part of this crew that is going to destroy masculinity. Okay. And they said, wow, we have a market. Let's go after the black folk down at the bottom who are getting neglected. They have money to spend. And if we come up with what we term black exploitation movies, they'll come out. So the way to come out is appeal to the lowest common denominator. So let's glorify the pimps, old drug dealers, thugs, bank robbers, gangsters, and everything else. Makes sense. Mm. And they started doing that, and they started glorifying dysfunction. And I heard them discussing this. They said, we need to start with two things. The black woman was the role model because she controlled her men the way they looked at it. And two, if we start experimenting on black males, in trying to see if we can take them down a notch. So mm -hmm. instead of, I'm black and I'm proud, Ungawa, black power, you know, afro, you know, and a beard, uh, jeans, fatigue jacket, and ready for the revolution, they came out with Superfly in 1971-72, where this dude's got processed heads, you know, driving a pimp mobile, selling drugs, and they make him a hero. They had Black Caesar with um, Fred the Hammer Williams, and that plot was he was a major drug dealer who was trying to become the only drug dealer, and he was killing and assassinating a whole lot of people. He became the hero driving off in the limo into the sunset smoking a big Cuban cigar. Mm -hmm. And see, they started doing that.